That that is a top question. Don't know that it wasn't meant to be. I thought we might uh, be, <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. I think the really that getting that governance right is is going to be challenging. I mean, before the AI, that was a lot of uh, work that go into the data governance already to avoid the bias. But in terms of the AI governance, I think it is still an evolving field that people are still working on it. Um, including the big tech like the OpenAI or Google, uh, DeepMind, they they are still working on it. I but I think from a lot of us, the way we can contribute is to make sure that our our voice are heard because we really do not want the AI to be built by just a uh, by just a few people on on this planet, right? I mean, just by a uh, uh, a, a few people that has got their voice uh, heard. So I think that AI governance is still evolving, but it's so important to get it right. And what we can do as a practitioner is that to make sure that we are speaking on behalf of a lot of people that we all can represent, that we all want to represent. And, and that is, the, I think, the minimum that we can do. Well, let's say we get it right. Well, let's say we get it half right. And we make some good progress towards governance. Um, what are the ben- what are the benefits then of having an empathetic AI? I if think we, we, if we get that right, I think we've mentioned some of these um, in in some of our contexts. We've talked about trust. We've talked about adoption. We've talked about protecting um, dignity when it comes to the user, um, with at reducing harm. And I think the key is that if we do these things, if we can do that, then what it, it allows for is the expansion of human potential with, oh. by, by advancing these other issues, which we've talked about in, in, a different, in different frameworks, in the different contexts during this, this conversation. But ultimately what we're talking about is getting to the place where AI expands human potential and that only happens if we've got adoption, trust, dignity, do no harm, reduction in in bias, et cetera, the, the very things that we've talked about. Yeah, I want yeah. to echo that, that I remember being so excited. I'm a future forward thinker. And I had been playing around with generative AI for a while, but then ChatGPT is released. Now everybody has access to it for free that has a device and internet access, right? Like equity, yay, for generative AI being so excited about the potential. That will be, I think, three years in November is the mm-hmm. anniversary release of ChatGPT. Um, in that three years, I went from that excitement and so much potential. And wow, think about what we could do as humans if we were mm-hmm. able take away all the drudgery and be able to spend our time and energy on more important things. But that hasn't been the last three years of my life. Working in K-12 education, it's instead been focused on AI literacy, educating people about the potential harms, um, educating people about transparency, about the importance of governance, right? Because the majority of AI models that we have out there right now are not practicing empathetic AI and safeguarding human dignity and mm-hmm. prevent harm, to be quite honest. I think one thing that perhaps we can add to that is that to have that um, accountability mechanism. So like if the AI really indeed does something wrong or something harmful, well, we should probably have a mechanic as a way to determine who is accountable Mm-hmm. Where, whether is that a data provider or developer, or maybe the company deploying it, um, and that's so many layers. So that is something that we 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 want to address and start building, which is that accountability mechanism. Yeah, and I I would add to that. We talked about transparency when those when those types of things happen. I think it's imperative that we're transparent that it that it occurred. We we state it. We understand it. We don't try to brush it under the rug because that's just going to be worse. That we surface that and try to get to the root cause and monitor. Can can we you know can we get to the root cause to to quote fix that issue? But 
it needs to be surfaced up at for the whole organization to continue to trust these tools. Right. Yeah, we need accountability. And mm -hmm. right now, there's no accountability from the makers right. of these AI models, at least in the U.S. I can only right. speak in the U.S. You know what? You, you yeah. know what? You mentioned transparency, and transparency has two aspects. You know, one is make the thing visible, make the workings of this complicated machine visible. Um, the alternative view is that it's invisible. And, you know, my view of most of this technology is that we shouldn't have to know anything about it. I see that as a design failure and that it, in to, to answer Donald's question specifically of what would this look like to me, it would be invisible. I don't think we should be seeing it Very because, you know, number one, I'm, I'm kind of rejecting the premise, the premise that it is AI. Mm. Uh, it's, okay. it, it, there's different things, right? AlphaGo is a theorem prover, uh, or not AlphaGo, sorry, that's a game player, but uh, the one that does geometry and, and proving, right? It, it's, it's a reasoning system. Generative AI, whether it's diffusion models for images or, or language models, are, are essentially predictor generators that don't think, that don't have causal reasoning and awareness and so on. And so really, to me, it's a UI, not an AI. Mm -hmm. it, it's a language interface to a computer. But the generative AI tech doesn't do things. It, it does translations into machine speak for retrieval purposes and fuzzy retrieval purposes, not real retrieval purposes, and not a whole lot else. And so... You know, w when I think about it, I feel like it is incumbent on us as providers or designers or the people in charge of getting systems built to make those things fit and, and to be invisible. And, and that people, w what we are talking about is sort of the technocrats view where we're making the user or the person who's being forced to use it, we're, we're making them adapt to the machine and do the cognitive work mm -hmm. that we are unable to because that's just how the thing works or unwilling to because it's just not how we've approached the problem. Do you think that, I, I, just I, I think that transparency issue, I kind of agree to a certain extent. Um, as an end user, uh, we certainly don't really necessarily have to show that transparency at all level. But from the evaluator perspective, from the big tech perspective, from the developer perspective, and also more importantly, from the regulatory bodies perspective, we certainly want to be able to make sure that it's transparent so that when something goes wrong or even something goes really well, we want to have that ability to really understand um, how it works and why it happened. So I think yeah. to a certain expect that transparency is still is still so important. Not necessarily I can see that. the end user at all time, but it's still important from that angle because that is the only way for us mm -hmm. to continue to evolve and improve it. <laughs> <laughs>